Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So today's system is from the user Lion12 in Discord, so massive thank you to them for sending their system. But without further ado, let's get straight into this. So their system is called the Mantra System, so let's go ahead and get that ready. There it is. And they actually give us a little description in the Discord. So it says, Behold a system that is the beginning of a longer connected universe that will reveal a system's release. The first instalment is the Mantra System. Moons have descriptions too. Awesome. So, here we go. Still loading. Quite a while. Right, come on. Always thinking about it. Come on, there's a lot of rings in here. What's going on? Right, here it is. Oh, I like the background. That dark purple sort of nebula going on. I kind of like that. Right, what's all this then? Right, so Mantra. It's located in a galaxy billions of light years to the Milky Way, with signs of previous inhabitation to a degree. System should run fine. Surface illumination, realistic lighting recommended. Very cool. Are we already on that? Realistic. Okay, good. Cool. Okay, so Mantra itself. The centre of the system. Mantra is an F-type class star more massive and luminous than Sol, the sun. Uh, Grandiu here. A Mercury-like world that orbits very close to Mantra and glows bright red all over the planet. Oh, yes. There he is. Cool. Next up, we have got this one here. Berenti. Another Mercury world with slightly lower temperatures than uh, Grandiu. Nice. Next up, we got Orku over here. Metal-rich body with a tenuous blue atmosphere. Looking good. Then we have uh, Itchor here. Looking good. This world may, or oh, this world has many bright yellows on its surface due to the presence of sulfur deposits. The rest um, on most of the planet. Looking good. Very nice. Now we have Keros over here. The first gas giant of the system with its own gas moon. Its appearance is grayscale with not many storms. And then there's Leros. The gas moon, it is very bright pink purple bands and is a very small for a gas giant body. So I guess it's a little gas dwarf. Yeah, it is quite small, isn't it? There we go. Cool. Then we have Quarantine over here. Let's see where are we? Yep. A very unusual world with little to no land masses and a massive ocean of toxic corrosive breed. It has one moon that orbits close by. Let's have a look underneath. What's, what's all this? So, oh yes. Toxic indeed. Okay, there you go. It has one moon as well. This is a Pokemon. An orange colour moon that orbits at a very inclined and close orbit to Quarantine. There it is. Looking good. Okay. We have Derelict Mothership. Oh, hey, oh. It's been coloured as well. <laughs> um, a large abandoned alien mothership left adrift in the orbit of Mantra. A signal can be heard coming from the ship at regular intervals in an unknown language. So if anyone can translate that, if anyone knows what that says, let us know. That does actually mean anything. Next. Okay, so next up we have, there's a comet. Uh, 3310 slash 12, where's that? I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Yep. A comet from the asteroid belt that dips inward to the inner system. Nice. Then we got Forcement. This planet is a reason why infrastructure was built in this system. Upon entry to the system, massive energy signatures were detected coming from this planet, and upon approach, it was clear that it was a normal Earth like world without any signs of civilization. But there was a massive barrier surrounding the entire planet without a way to bring this down. This barrier is bright green and geomorphically patterned. And upon trying to. Um, and upon trying to pass it, resulted in being pushed back by magnetic forces or complete obliteration by radiation and electricity. Whatever made this was trying to keep something in or out. Either way, it clearly succeeded. So there it is. Nice green atmosphere on top of it. I do like a green atmosphere there. Lots of derelicts around it. Barrier generator. Interesting. We've got formation. A moon of forcement. It has a major mining site visible from space positioned up below the mining station. Derelict refueling station as well. There you go. good awesome stuff okay next up we've got uh, Gemen over here Jimen this planet has large deposits of a rare mineral found only in the system's astro belt and some objects in the belt is extremely useful in making strong alloys and has a wide range of unique properties and we have Benek minor body of a green surface and deep blue atmosphere which is here looking good then we have a uh, 
Split ray. Minor body of a red orange surface. There you go. Uh, retina. A relatively large ice body with a small moon. Over here. Looking good. There's its moon. So we've got uh, Passe here. Passe. A small coloured moon of retina. And we have Hydroxia. Over here. Where are we? There it is. A water-rich gas giant comprised of mainly water vapour with an unusually low opacity. Its bands are a deep blue colour. Okay, there it is. And it has some moons as well, so A, B, C. Uh, we've got Dio here. Highly volcanic moon caused by tidal forces, much like Io. So it's your Io equivalent, looking good. I like the glow to it. Looks pretty awesome. We've got Pole. Muddy brown moon with high concentrations of metal near the surface. Looking great. We've got a uh, cuvic. Icy moon with a fairly thick light blue atmosphere. Looking good. Nice. Next up we've got Archer. Very massive icy world with a thick atmosphere and three minor moons. So you can see them all there. Very, very close as well. Too close to be anything larger than asteroids because if they were spheres they'd be torn apart. Right, there you go. Next up we've got Ors over here. The dominant gas giant and the final planet of the system. It has light blue bands similar to Uranus, but much more vibrant. It has many moons. Nice. So there's the moons. So we've got yeah, Uro there. Icy moon subsurface oceans that contain unicellular and multicellular life. We've got arrows. Icy moon. Oh, that's the one with it, yeah. So Uro is the small moon with varying surface canyons and cliffs. We've got this one here. The moon contains very high amounts of surface gold, even more just below the surface crust. We've got Cr Chrysalis. Here, it's looking uh, pretty cool. Another anomalous body that contains an unknown energy storing material. A single kilogram of the substance could power an entire city for a month. Energy courses around the planet in the form of purple cloud-like gases. We've got Port, another unnotable icy moon. We've got Trilelm, a moon composed of mainly clay that is somewhat not drying out. There is evidence of previous oceans that covered the entire planet. Okay, that's over there. We've got Sia. An icy moon that has liquid water on the surface somehow along with thin atmosphere. Then a uh, requilum here. A hatable moon with mainly liquid nitrogen oceans mixed with water. Life in these conditions has bloomed red and bioluminescence. Oh yes, looking great. Nice. Awesome stuff. Okay, and I believe that is everything. So there we go. So this is the first of a set of systems by the sound of it. I quite like that. Nice and simple. I do like the deep purple background, not many background stars, so we're kind of in the mist here, but there it is. And there's your full lineup. So an interesting system. I did like that. I did like the green planet, actually. That one was quite cool. But yeah, there we go. What do you guys think of that? Let us know down below in the comments. But again, a massive thank you to the creator of this system for sending this in. This was created by Lion12. If you guys enjoyed it, let's see if we can go for 100 likes on today's video as well, everyone. Subscribe for more. I'm also going to join to 50,000 subscribers. And with that, we'll send done, everybody. Make sure you have a great day out there. Stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.